until the 18th century it was believed that air is one substance but afterwards it was believed that air is a mixture of gases so when lavoisier proved that air has two components so uh, in 1789 he proved that air is actually a mix mixture of gases so what he did he did that famous uh, experiment of and he put a candle in the plate and over it he covered that plate with a glass and inside the plate he put some water and let it lit so he marked the position of the candles uh, uh, sorry position of the water so after some time when the candles stopped burning uh, what happened the water level rise, uh, rose up so he concluded that there are main components of the air are nitrogen and oxygen and oxygen make up only one fourth of the total air he also found out that oxygen was the gas which supported burning of the candle so if you will see in this diagram you can see that is a clear clear representation that nitrogen is 78 percent oxygen is about 21 percent so when we add these two main gases we get 99 percent so 99 percent of air is made up of nitrogen and oxygen the rest one percent is the other gases now what are these other gases these other gases may be uh, these other gases which are represented by pink color may be either carbon dioxide okay or noble gases or water vapor or smoke and dust particles now smoke and dust particles vary according to the uh, region okay region to region it varies and carbon dioxide usually is 0.03 percentage whereas the uh, inert gases compose of 0.93 or percent of uh, the this one percent okay so together it makes 0.96 and rest this 0.404 percent varies uh, place to place okay so let's see once more if you will see here you can see clearly it is written here see the main components of the air is nitrogen and oxygen and other components are carbon dioxide water vapor here i have represented see you can see that it is represented i have already told you how to write the molecular formula and the compound formula okay so here it is given so n2 is written because nitrogen exists as a molecule oxygen will be also as a molecule so rare gases like argon helium radon krypton all these are inert gases okay they don't react normally impurities like carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen hydrogen sulfide dust particles now these main carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen these are the components which are released in the air after petroleum is burned or by certain factories so they vary so we can see that air is actually a mixture of gases okay so this is the composition of air and you can find the variation in composition of air when you will go up in the mountain so at high altitudes in deep seas in industrial areas in forest so we will see this one in lower plains more oxygen will be there as the height is increased uh, oxygen becomes less so whenever any person travels up high or mountaineers go high up in the mountain like uh, himalayas they need oxygen or extra support for breathing similarly when a diver dives in the deep seas so he is you can see the diver is carrying a oxygen cylinder yes he is carrying an oxygen cylinder for swift breathing because we cannot breathe inside the water though gases are dissolved in water we cannot breathe in as you go to the deeper seas then oxygen will be less and 
the pressure will be more okay in industrial areas the impurities the sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide and everything this will be more because of the gases released by the chimneys of the industries understood now you see air is also a matter so air will occupy space and air will have a mass also okay so we can see this by doing this experiment which we are going to perform later on so here a beaker is there and we can see the beaker is filled with water and we are putting one tumbler okay you can also do this experiment in your home take a bucket of water or any mug you can fill it with water D dip the glass straight then what will happen you can see the level of the water and when you try to move the glass a little bit slant in a slanting position you can see the bubbles coming out why the bubbles is coming out because air which is trapped inside the glass will let won't let the water go inside so once this air is free which will come as out as a bubbles and you will see the water getting inside the glass so this concludes that air occupies space okay or you can see a balloon so when you inflate a balloon then balloon uh, then balloon uh, see the area expands the balloon expands it stretches and that also shows that the air occupies space so anything which is open when you fill water inside an empty glass then also bubbles are coming out so this also shows that air occupies what yes space and when we weigh this air filled balloon with an empty balloon then you will find the difference so that also shows that air has mass air is highly compressible okay air is highly compressible you see this empty glass so what uh, do you see something is inside no actually you are wrong air is inside now let me show you the presence of air so when we will try to fill this glass of water uh, sorry this empty glass with water then let's see what happens you see this one air exerts pressure now see you take an open can put some water and start heating it then after that what you do you put the cap of that okay you cannot take a plastic ye can here because it will burn up then let it cool so what you will see once the can is cooled the steam is being heated up then the outside air pushes so inside pressure gets decreased and outside air pushes so the can, can started crumbling slowly so that shows that air has pressure and fourth one this one that air is highly compressible that i have already told you previously so when you will push a piston of the syringe it goes inside so that shows that air exerts uh, sorry air is highly compressible see once more now what i have got us i have got a syringe so when i try to pull the piston of the syringe so air will enter inside the syringe from the open part now what happens if i put this syringe into this water and i try to push it can you see the bubbles forming so this is because the air is inside the syringe was getting out so this also shows that air occupies space about the properties of the air and we were reading that air can be easily compressed now this piston which is here 
expanded so it is expanded up to certain limit i'm trying to push this piston can you see i am easily without any haste i'm pu put pushing this piston so this proves that air we can get compressed easily okay why it is easily compressed because here we have this nozzle you can see clearly the nozzle is there with which you can easily the air comes out or gets in when i pull up the piston okay so this proves that air can be compressed easily now let's revise what we have uh, read up to this so air is a mixture of gases it constitutes of 78% of nitrogen 21% of oxygen and rest gases about 1% so there are several gases present in air you can see here the different gases present in this 1% okay and the biggest percentage is of nitrogen 78 and after that oxygen 21% then if you will see here we can see the different properties of air so here two beakers are there one with hot and one with cold water and we have put the balloon on the top of the test tubes you can see the beaker with hot water the balloon near expands why this because hot water leads to the air inside test tube be hot and so it inflates the balloon equally similarly you can see that the air has weight so we have put two balls one filled with air and one with not without any air so you can see that the air which is fill uh, balloon air filled balloon has more weight similarly if you inflate one cushion with the uh, air then it inflates equally in all directions so it occupies space and have uh, see can be compressed easily so you can see all are these the properties of the air and here we come to a last where we can see that air also has some dust particles and last the table shows you the composition of air and their uses now this is your homework from the video write the name of any three inert gas gases who discovered that air contains nitrogen and oxygen write the names of the layers of the atmosphere in sequence draw a pie chart showing the percentage composition of gases in air and list the physical properties of air now write all the answers of these questions with today's date in your pen notebook after writing the uh, uh, word definitions from the book okay